Today we're going to film a simulated and hypothetical case, meaning we're going to use Jade, our mannequin, who is going to be our patient navigating the healthcare system with hearing loss. Simulation. It's an artificial representation of real world events in mock scenarios to facilitate understanding using mannequins for role playing. We will demonstrate some of the challenges and barriers along the way. And the goal is to hopefully reduce the confusion people have when they go through healthcare system. It can be very, very confusing, even for myself. And I've had hearing loss for over 50 years. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Dee Dee from Healthy Hearing Loss. All right, let's go ahead and visit Jade at her house. Hey, it's good to see you, Jade. What's going on? You can't hear me? All right, um, let me write something down then. Let's see here. You want to read these and tell me what's going on? So you have hearing loss. It was sudden this morning, or you've had it for the last couple of days. I noticed that you've been turning up the TV lately. Um, you want to go to the doctor. You do. Okay. Do you want me to call your primary care provider? Primary care services is the entry into the healthcare system. Its major task is the early detection and prevention of disease and the maintenance of health. Level of care includes routine care of common health problems and chronic illnesses. Primary care provider, PCP, can be a medical doctor, a nurse practitioner, or even a physician assistant. And what's, what's his or her name? What, oh, wait a minute. What is her or his name? All right, so we'll go ahead and um, call your primary care office and set up an appointment with Mrs. N.P. Let me go do that now. Yes, hi, this is Dee Dee. I'm calling for Jay to see Mrs. N.P. Yeah, she's asking me to call for her because she can't hear. That's the reason why she wants to be seen. All right, you'll have the nurse call me back. All right, this is the number. You can call me back on this. My name is Dee Dee. All right, very good. Thank you. Bye-bye. They will call back. You want some tea? And we may get away down. Oh, here comes the phone. Hello, this is Dee Dee. I'm her sister, yeah. Yeah, she's having some trouble hearing. She uh been actually having trouble the last few days. I've noticed that she's been turning up the TV. But today it seems like she can't even hear me at all. She's uh, I have to use a notepad to ask her questions. A telephone triage nurse determines the nature and urgency of a problem or problems and provides direction for the level of care required. She says she's not having any pain. There's um, no headache. She doesn't have a sinus congestion. She had a cold a couple of weeks ago, but that's about it. No drainage. Nope. Okay. All right, great. Oh, we'll be able to see her today? All through telehealth. Telehealth is a form of health care that uses telecommunications, including by landline, mobile phones, and the internet to deliver health care at a distance. It improves patients' experience by reducing the need to travel. Okay. All right. I'll make sure she has a laptop set up. Very good. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. It looks like we're going to do a telehealth and that's, to be, that's like another hour from now. So we'll go ahead and get that set up for you so you can be ready. Okay. Hi, Jade. How you doing? You can't hear me. Wow, this is unusual for you. You don't have a history of this. So looking back at your history, you don't have any family history. You can't hear me. Sister there, can she speak for you? Let me write this down. Hold on. Okay, can you read that real quick for me? All right, so, so it would be okay to, to talk for you. Okay. Verbal consent is needed by Jade to talk to her sister. So let me go ahead and um, have my nurse give you a call. I think it's important that I look at your ears. It might be some wax or something, or maybe have an infection, but I'd like to take a look and then we can plan from there, okay? All right, I'll see you then. Take care, bye-bye. Oh, Jade. Jade, come on up. I'm going to go ahead and check your blood pressure. I am a certified medical assistant. Certified medical assistant, CMA. Duties can vary depending on the medical facility's needs. And some of the duties can include administrative and clinical care, including drawing blood, taking and recording vital signs and EKGs, and assist medical professionals as needed. I understand you have hearing loss. So I'm going to go document in our electronic health records, and I will let Mrs. MP know that you are ready. It was nice to see you, Jay. Bye-bye. We will rate thumbs down for ineffective communication with a person experiencing hearing loss.
thumbs up for effective communication with the thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the description box below. Okay, here we are, Jade. Thanks for coming in. All right, I'm going to get right to the exam. Tympanic membrane looks good. That's your eardrum. Open. Open. Okay. All right. Now, it sounds like you might have some sensory neural hearing loss. I'm going to send you to an otolaryngologist, and he'll do a hearing test and do some other tests, and then you can come back and see me afterwards. All right. I got to run. Bye. Okay. Let's replay how it should be. Hey, Jade. How are you? Can you hear me? Listen, I, I went ahead and wrote out some questions that I want you to read before we get on to the exam. I think I have enough information from our assessment, but now I want to do a physical exam. So go ahead and look at those questions and see if you can answer those for me. Do you have any ringing in your ears? Is there any pain or discharge? No. All right, so let's go ahead and first do a quick little exam on your ears first. Any pain when I pull? I'm going to go ahead and look inside your ears. This will take only a few seconds here. All right, let's take a look. Nothing in there. Let's go on the other side. Always check it both sides. All right, while well, I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and look inside your nose. Can you open your mouth? And I'm going to go ahead and palpate. Okay, nothing. I'm going to go ahead and do some more testing. And I'm going to put this on the top of your head. It does sound like you might have some sensory neural hearing loss, so I'm going to go ahead and send you to an otolaryngologist. I'll write all of this down for you so that you can read it on your way out. And basically, he's going to do a comprehensive, or she will do a comprehensive exam, and then you'll probably get a hearing test and maybe some imaging. Does that sound good? And I'll also look for any medical records coming from the otolaryngologist, okay? That's that ENT doctor. All right, I'll write it all down for you and give it to you on the way out. All right, bye. Tertiary care includes providers who specialize in a particular clinical area. Entry into the healthcare system at this level is gained by referral from primary. Looking for Jade. Jade. Is Jade around? Where is she? Over there? Okay. I'm going to look up your stuff on the computer. Do you have any medical history? Okay, all right. Do you take any medications? You're here because of hearing loss. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let your doctor know, and he'll come and see you. Let's again replay how it should be. Hi, my name is Susan. I want to ask you about your medical history. Right here, medical history. How about medication? Right here. You're going to be seeing Dr. Ear, and he'll be in to see you shortly. Dr. Ear, okay? He'll be in shortly. Bye. It was nice to meet you. An otolaryngologist asks a series of questions, such as onset, duration, associated symptoms, pain, etc., then performs exam. Okay, Jade, now we're going to take a look inside your ear. All right. Looks good. The otolaryngologist takes client to his office to discuss the plan. We're going to set up a hearing test with our audiologist right in the office today. I'm going to call the hospital and make arrangements for an MRI as soon as they can do it. Then once I get the results from all that, we'll uh, get together again and see where we go from here. All right, Jade. I'll tell you when we get out to the car. I'll write it down for you. Let's play that again for thumbs up. Well, Jade, I'm sorry that you're having some problems hearing. Um, so we're going to set you up today right in our office with the audiologist to get a hearing test. And then I'm going to make arrangements for you to have an MRI, and that will be at the hospital. And once I get the results, we'll be in touch with you, and we'll discuss where we go from there. This ENT doctor asks his nurse to provide written information about today's visit. Hey, I have some instructions for you. Here you go. You're going to have a hearing test, and you're going to go get an MRI. And then we will make an appointment for you to discuss the results with Dr. Ear. Any questions? No. So we're going to walk out to the waiting room to see the front desk, and they will make another appointment for follow-up. You can come with me. An audiologist will also ask a series of questions before obtaining the hearing test. 
Here, Jay will undergo a pure tone and speech audiometry test. This can take up to 30 minutes or more. Jade then goes to the hospital to have a magnetic resonance imaging done, an MRI, and this can take up to 45 minutes or more. Finally, back to the ENT doctor's office to discuss the results with Dr. Ear. She needs hearing aids for sensory neural hearing loss of unknown ideology. Hearing loss can fall anywhere on a heterogeneous spectrum, and it starts with onset. How did somebody develop it? Was it congenital, sudden, progressive, and so forth? We have cause, type, degree, treatments, different treatments, communication. Now, this diagram may seem very busy. That's just a few to name. In other words, it's very complex. Jade has to decide whether she wants to get her hearing aid from her audiologist, a hearing aid specialist, either get it over the counter or even online. Jade has to do some research and see if her state mandates coverage or if insurance will cover the cost of hearing aids or will she have to pay out of pocket. Jade is feeling very overwhelmed and decides to go for counseling to talk about her new hearing loss and how to adjust to a new way of life. And the next step is autological rehabilitation as well as speech therapy, and this can occur in peer groups or one-on-one -on -one or even online. How to communicate with a person with hearing loss. Make eye contact. Use hand gestures. Don't shout or whisper. Write questions or instructions. Don't touch patient without permission. Wear a clear mask if possible. As you can see, Jade has a little bit of difficulty and challenges navigating through the healthcare system, but she also had some positive interactions as well. If you have no idea where to start, go ahead and start with your primary care provider. They will direct you. That's it, folks. Take care. See you in the next one. Bye.